and then well let's not go and then let's just deal with this right now and then we'll talk about it and then three two one I'm Mike Dimas and this is Pinball Shenanigans all right welcome back to uh, Valley Mystic last episode I installed the new power supply which looks nice and pretty and replace this connector and repin the other two connectors for the power supply today we are going to plug this in and turn it on and hope for no explosions so when I was posting this video yesterday I realized that when I was testing the bridges on the old board the bridge rectifiers that I was actually testing them wrong so I decided last night to double check the bridges and let's show you what I found actually if you watched the last episode then you already know the answer this should not come as a surprise to you but so you have to put the positive lead on the negative side of the bridge right here. Can you see that? How's that looking? And then measure the diodes across. That's good reading. That's good reading. Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then the negative lead goes on the positive side. Then you measure across, measure across. This was the suspected bad bridge. And what do you know? When you actually measure it properly, it tests just fine. So let's do the last one because I was suspecting the last one was a little out of spec too. But when you test it right, all three friggin' bridge rectifiers test fine. So, I'm a little bit sad about that because did I just change that power supply completely unnecessarily? I think the answer is probably, potentially, yes. The board itself looks fine. I'm not about to reinstall it and test it. So, that's too bad I didn't test the bridges correctly because I might have taken a different route. Um, obviously something was shorted. I just got to figure out what that was and why. And I'm trying to read the schematics here. And uh, here, I'll show you. Maybe you can help. You probably can't see this, but uh, let's see if I can... Uh... This is E8 right here, okay? E8 is the spot on the board that they had um, tied in two wires. It was the uh, white and green wire on J3. Whoops, this is, this is, uh, try and follow me here, I'm gonna be all over the place. Here's J3, pin one, that wire, and pin two, that wire. Those two wires were tied into that E8. And they are general illumination return, general illumination return. So what does tying it to E8 do? So if you follow down here, you follow down here, you follow down here, you go down here, you go down here, it ends up going to those places. So maybe that was okay. Then there was the other jumper wire that was here, I think that was one of the orange ones, tied into test point four, and test point four, and if you look up here, I don't know if you can see this, test point four is here, and that's 7.3 volts AC, um, but I can't remember which orange wire it was. I think pin 10 was an orange wire on the big 
J1 connector. Where's pin 10 gone? There. That also says general illumination bus. So I guess my question is this. Did these jumper wires have anything to do with the fuse blowing F3, which is a four amp? I think the answer is no. I think the wires were probably fine. So I have to figure out where there is a potential short or if the transformer itself is bad. That's kind of where I'm at. So I guess what I'm going to do is disconnect everything. Hold on. And have just strictly this connector plugged in. Because I think that's the power going in, right? I better double check that. I think it is though. Because if there's some sort of weird short on one of these boards, maybe this solenoid driver was causing that fuse to blow. Um, I don't know, I'd have to look into it to see if that makes sense, but what was that fuse for again? What did I say? I'm just kinda thinking out loud here. I may not conclude anything. 7.3 volts is test point four. So that's basically general illumination, right? So, I can't really disconnect general illumination, but maybe it's like a bad socket. Who knows? Anyway, I'm getting close to turning this thing on and just seeing what the hell happens. So, I'm going to disconnect everything. I'll be right back. Okay, so J1 on the power supply is the play field. J2 is the cabinet. J3 is all back box stuff. I forgot all about that. Which means J2 is the only connector I'm going to have plugged in. AC power, AC return. So that's the answer to that. Alright, time to go on another tangent. I forgot that I don't have a ground pin. So I'm going to change this plug. And then I thought, oh, well, I should check the plug on the inside of the cabinet, because does that look original? This old lamp cord? I don't think so, because look how long it is. That's friggin' like 12 feet, so pop the hood, and we're going to go on yet another tangent. Look what I found. A blown varister. So... I wonder if that has something to do with something. And then the last thing I found, well, let me swing around to the other side. It's not actually the last thing, I see some more. I seem to find one quarter in every single machine and <laughs> the tradition continues. The other thing is mouse poo. Ooh, and all kinds of green. Look at this. I bet you that is potentially crust from, like it looks like circuit board green from battery corrosion. But yeah, that is uh, nasty. So here's my tangent. I'm going to clean all this up. Then I'm going to replace the varistor. Then I'm going to replace the cord plug. And then maybe at that point I can finally turn this thing on. I thought that was going to be the beginning of the video. That may end up being the friggin' end at this rate. All right, shall I bore you with um, enthralling footage of replacing a plug end? <clears throat> it's not uh, too complicated. Uh, I go to Pinside, and there's uh, vids guides. Every time I replace a plug end, I refer back to that because uh, I forget every time. How to do it. So I refresh my memory when I uh, by going to vids guides on pin side <clears throat> how to replace a line plug. One moment. Okay so I think uh, you're supposed to Get yourself about an inch of play here. 
I only briefed over it really quickly. The main thing you need to know is on these older cords, there's no white and there's no black wire. So how do you know what is what? Fids guides. And if you look really closely, see if I can show you. Is this going to work? Okay. See the left side has little ridges and the right side is smooth. Ridges is neutral. Neutral is white. Okay. So that's how we know that. Um, so I'm going to get this wire prepared and I'll be right back. All right, there we go. The wire's prepped. And uh, so we'll put the ridged guy on silver. On this plug, you got to really be careful because the brass and the silver screws look very similar. But that's silver. That's brass. So we'll screw this on and uh, go from there. One other thing I noticed on this particular style of plug, I bought a few of them. This is my last one, is that the brass screw is actually a little bit bigger. So that's another way you can tell, on this model anyway. Okay, there we have it. The trick is to um, not really have any wire sticking out there. You just want insulation. You don't want like, you know, a centimeter of wire just exposed there. All right. See that? And you don't want little frays of stranded wire flopping and flying around either. So that's actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's on there nice and tight. Tug on the wires. Make sure they ain't going anywhere. And then you can slip on your end. I marked uh, the plug because sometimes it's a little hard to slip it into place, but there we go. See my two little black lines? Boom, now I don't have to fight with how it goes back on. And then I throw in my three screws and plug it in. All right, here's the before. And here's the after for $2.99 Canadian. All right, so I got a new plug. Oh, wait, one moment. I got to show you what else I did. There's the old varistor. So this usually means there was a power surge. The old back end got blown right off or front end. Possibly a lightning strike. So that has been replaced. These... MOVs. What are they? What's the full name? Metal Oxide Varistor. They um non-polarized, so you don't need to worry about which way you put it, right? So that's on there. Um, so we've done the new plug, new varistor, new power supply, repinning connectors. There's a lot of points of failure, and I'm never gonna know. Well, maybe I will, but is the line filter good? Is the transformer good? Is, you know, like, we're really going to just have to find out as we go. And <laughs> that involves plugging the machine in. Um, can you tell I'm a little hesitant? I vacuumed up all the mouse poop and crud back there. That looks much better. So, I'm going to put the play field down and... Uh, we're going to plug this bad boy in. I'm pretty sure it's in the off position, and then we'll turn it on together. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the uh, machine plugged in there. And before I plug in anything, I want to turn it on and make sure the uh, varistor doesn't blow up. If it does, it's going to be quite the show. I heard they explode in quite the fashion, so let's hopefully 
not have a show. Okay, I'm going to turn this on in three, two, one. That was a little scary. Everything happy? Okay, what I could probably do at this point is test the voltage on the service outlet and kind of see if I'm getting proper voltage there. So, one moment. Okay, why don't I just try my um, thingamajiggy. Okay, it says it's correct. So, I imagine uh, I don't need to like stick my multimeter in there. I've never really loved doing that. I, I don't think I've ever actually done it. Um, I don't know why it's scary, but I test higher voltages than 120, but I uh, maybe I should crack the seal and actually uh, test it. All right, here goes nothing. I'm gonna set it to AC voltage, and you're supposed to hold the insulated portions. You're supposed to do, oh wait, this is plugs upside down according to the video, so I think the black goes in this side, and hot goes in this side. Huh? Why does that say we have three volts? That's weird. Um, okay. Very odd. Uh, should I reverse it? Will that do anything? Or will I kill myself? Hmm. I'll be back. Figured it out. I was on uh, DC volts. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, come on, baby. Yeah, there we go, 117.5 volts. Okay, everything on this end looks good. I think it's friggin' officially time to plug in the power supply. Okay, it's time. Ah, la 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 la. J2 is plugged in. And only J2. I get the lamp driver plugged in, but I don't really care if I blow up that board. It's uh, not expensive to replace, and I have a replacement, and I don't think that's going to happen anyway. So, first thing I'm going to do is power on uh, that guy. And. Okay, let's just rip off the band-aid. The machine's off, so nothing should happen. Uh-oh. Anything happen? Oh. What happened was this light is plugged into it, and I saw that turn on in the background and frightened me a little tad. Okay, here's the friggin' test. I'm going to turn off the light. What we want to see is absolutely nothing. Especially no fuse is blowing because then we, we we would be back to square one and Then well, let's not go and then let's just deal with this right now, and then we'll talk about it and then three two one Everything seems to be okay Hmm Okay Excellent, um I think it's time to test the voltages on the power supply. Okay, I'll just try and uh, do this. You're not going to be able to hear me as well because I'm going to be over there. And I don't have a freaking microphone. I tried three different microphones. They all didn't work, so I gave up. But uh, I should be able to see. Can you see the multimeter? All right, let me use my little fun feature that I never use. Hold this. Ah, how do you like that? I never use that. Okay, so you can see roughly what I'm doing, and there's a little more light there. I got my schematics out, so I'll be referring to these for voltages, okay? Um, if all these voltages are correct, then I will be a happy boy. Okay, so let's start. Okay. Test point five forty three volts. Mm, nothing. Wait, hold on. Forty three volts DC. That is DC. Test point two, two hundred and thirty volts DC. Mm, nothing. 
test point three, test point one, test point four. One of them's AC, right? Test point four is AC. Test point five. Okay. Uh, do I have the wrong connector plugged in? I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong exactly, so I will fudge around here a little bit and see what it is that I am screwing up. Okay, you're not going to believe this. Or maybe you will, because it's pinball shenanigans. Uh, maybe just in the whole mix of turning things on and off and fudging with switches non-stop, it appears as though what I thought was on is now off and what I thought was off is now on in terms of the switch position. <laughs> so I could have really uh, gave myself a little zinger there. But uh, yeah, WTF. So the machine is now on. Uh, you know how I knew that? Because I started plugging in J3 uh, connector into the power supply and all of a sudden I saw some playfield lights go on. I'm like, whoa, what the immediately removed it. I'm glad I didn't fry anything. I mean, I hope I didn't. But, uh, uh, I see Shawnee Boy just texted me. He's in, uh, Europe doing some turn pinball tournaments there. So, I'll have to check on, on what he's saying. But, uh, okay, let's check voltages now. Test point one is supposed to be 5.4. We got 6.08. That's as far as I got. Test point two is 230 volts. Come on, baby. Oh, it also says right on the power supply. That's actually pretty cool. So this is 11.9. And then this is 43. And then this should be 7.3 AC. Look at that, boys and girls. We might be in business. Oh, and the other thing, shenanigandus that I did is um, the one connector I repinned for the power supply. Turned out that's for the solenoid driver. This is the one for the power supply that I didn't repin. So I'm going to repin that, another tangent, and then we'll have all fresh pins on the power supply and a bonus one on the solenoid driver. Okay. J1 has been repinned. And that was my buddy Matt McGoffin just texting saying that he loves the Avengers Infinity Quest that uh, I just sold him. So glad you're enjoying that, Matt. And Sean says he's just chilling in uh, England right now. But uh, I'm sure that there is a tournament happening, maybe starting tomorrow or something. But uh, you can see that extra pin there. That's normal. The connector is 8-pin, female, and the male is 9-pin, and the reason is this. You likely have an 8-pin J1 plug. Yes, I do. However, J1 on the board has 9 pins for games, Future Spa, and Kiss, and Space Invaders only. I think it's because they have extra lighting in the back box. I think that might be the reason. So. That's hooked up correct, and uh, I guess, you know, we can just turn this thing on and hope everything's still good. All right, three, two, one. Okay, no blown fuses. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just quickly check the uh, voltages again, make sure everything's still happy. We've got general illumination now on the play field. We won't have it on the back box until we plug in the big J3 Mac Daddy. He'll be next. Um, and then if everything checks out, I should screw this bracket uh, back. And it's nice now that I can tell by the lights when it, the machine is on and off. So, is there a way to reverse the switch um, just by toggling and untoggling things like if I disconnect everything off the power supply and then move the switch and then reconnect it and then move the switch again can I make it so that on feels like on and off feels like on with the toggle probably because I think I reversed it as I was doing this but anyway so far so good 
Okay, so I think this is going to be the biggest test. Voltages are still good. Plugged in the big J1 connector. I think if anything's going to go wrong, then it'll be now. But if that's the case, if a fuse blows now, then we know that it has something to do with the back box because that's what that connector controls, right? So, um, let's keep a close eye. Three, two, one. Ah, okay. That is a good sign. We've got our back box general illumination now. So, that is a good start. I think, uh, the whole powertrain from the plug end to the um, what you would call it the filter line filter to the varistor to the transformer to the power supply I think all that is happy so that means I'm happy too um, I think what I'll do then is um, I think it's safe to put everything back from the power supply I think so I think it's time to mount this the bracket and the cage back into place and uh yeah then start plugging in other boards damn we could almost potentially play a game if, if things keep going this smooth okay so next step i remove the uh solenoid driver board i just don't imagine um gonna get many good results from this board I should check that fuse for fun. See if that is even uh, working or not. Hey, look at this. This has been replaced. That's not normally socketed, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Let's look at another one here. Yeah, that's not normally socketed. It's another spare one I have. So the board I put in apparently came from a Nugent. My notes say, displays were flickering with this driver installed in Nugent, but another driver worked fine. I've got the cap replaced, I've got the ground mods done. I think this is the power going in. Uh, check the schematics and, I don't know, I think that's J5 connector. Oh wait, J3 connector says transformer bridge ground. Oh no, that is J3 connector, never mind. That's J5. I had to deduce that this is J3 because there's a label there and I can't see under the label. So J1, 2, 5, 4. Deduction. All right, so I'm going to power this on, see if anything happens. Not much. I did secure the bracket. It's all back in place. I just didn't put the cage on. Probably should do that. Um, I think now I can test the voltages on the solenoid driver. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fudge around with this. Um, before I try and power the game on for the first time, I will definitely bring you along. But, uh, this video is going to take me a dog's age to edit. Because uh, I've done a thousand little clips. But So, I'm going to try and actually make some headway before... Uh, hitting the record again but definitely when we power this on for the first time you'll be here so give me a couple minutes to mess around here okay well five minutes later i hit the record button what do you know i didn't actually do much in terms of checking stuff i just plugged it all in because this solenoid driver i know works i thought it was in my electronimo or stars. I thought it was stars, actually. Um, I don't remember pulling this out of my Nugent. But it's possible. Uh, there is a transistor missing. Q19. I think uh, it was not used for the purposes of my stars, maybe. And I repurposed it. Uh, this clip was missing here. So I just added one. And I added the cage. And I should screw the solenoid driver board in. But everything's connected. And uh, it is showtime. It's either showtime or no time. But 
I guess we're about to find out. Here it is, boys and girls. The mystic moment of truth. Three, two, one. Power. How do we, do we got any blinkage? Do we got any blinkage? There's an initial blink on the CPU LED. And then there was nothing. Let's try that again. Oh. Did a fuse blow? Oh. I feel like that might be what happened. I bet you it's that. This is my prediction. I bet you it's that same fuse. And I'm predicting that it's the soundboard that's causing it to blow. That's just my prediction. I can't say for sure, but um, I will be back. I'll let you know what happened. Okay, sure enough, the F3 fuse was blown. So I have replaced it and disconnected the soundboard. That's just my sneaking suspicion. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. It could be one of the displays too. So if this blows again, then I will disconnect all of the displays. Is there any one that looks obviously bad? Like, let's look for a busted nipple. That looks okay, that looks okay. Okay, no obvious signs. Sometimes these resistors cook up pretty good, so yeah, all right. Okay, well, let's see if it's my soundboard theory. Uh, this, I don't have a four amp um, fuse breaker. I have a three amp, but I might go through a couple fuses. Hopefully not. Okay, let's keep an eye on that fuse. Oh, look. Look, 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 Did you hear that? My friggin' theory was right. We've got a tracked mode. So, I just spent a lot of money and a lot of hours to do all the things that I did. But I could have achieved probably the same result if I initially just unplugged the soundboard and stuck in a 4 amp slow blow. You know, in theory, obviously, we want the new plug-in, the new Varistor, and the power supply it is a nice bonus, for sure. And all the repinning is definitely happy. I'm t totally happy with that. I'm gonna have to uh, figure out what Q19 controls, but that's getting ahead of myself. We have friggin' power, boys and girls. How about displays? Ah, look at this. Yes, all displays. That one just needs to be reflowed. Ooh, this is exciting. Okay, what kind of board is this? Is this a squawk and talk? Is this a cheap squeak? What is this soundboard? Just a generic soundboard? Okay, I'm gonna have to see if I have another one of these and try and figure out what is causing the soundboard to blow the fuse on the power supply. Huh. Okay, this is good. This is good progress. Actually, while we're here, boom. Oh, we don't have credits. Okay. We must start with that here. Come on. Get my fingernail in here. Okay, there's a few clicks. Ah, six credits. All the hard work is paid off. We've got action. Ooh, <laughs> that is very little action. Let's plunge that a little better. We got flippers. We don't have rubbers. Sling works. That one not so much. How do I know if those are working? Oh, well. That uh, indicator there. What about this? Boom, wow, powerful. Very cool. I'd have to look at the scores. Let's uh, spin that and see. Oh, we're missing a digit, okay. We can fix that. How about pop bumpers? 
saucer. All right, uh, captive pull switch. Yep, that's advancing. Let's try and get a special and get the knocker going. Boom! Holy poop, we got action. Um, strain collector bonus. See if the ball spits out. Uh, all drop targets reset. So is it just the slingshot? That's about the only solenoid. Maybe that's Q19. Okay, well, this is amazing. That is some awesome progress. The original CPU is good. I mean, if you look closely, we don't have any battery corrosion. Hey, we don't have any battery at all, actually. Uh, if this CPU is gonna behave, <clears throat> then um, I might as well throw a memory cap on there and uh, see if I have one of these sound boards or at the very least send it out. Uh, oh, I think I see a problem. Check this out. I don't want to get too close to the power supply, but that capacitor is exploded out the side. So that's definitely going to be an issue. I wonder if I happen to have one of those and if that would cause the issue. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I think on this awesome note, I shall wrap up this video. I don't think actually I have this flickering issue with the displays. On, uh, hey, let's, you know what? Let's run one more test. There's lamp test. Hmm. You know, this Mylar actually doesn't look amazing. It looks like a wrinkly old play field. That is the one really sad thing about this. I wish there was something more I could do about it. Uh, may have to try and peel it off and see what happens, but that's the least of my concerns right now. I just want to get this thing functional. But uh, let's check the display test. Yeah, so I don't have this flickery display issue at all. I've got, oh, okay, this is good news. I've got a digit out on all displays, so that is a common problem. Uh, as in, they all have the same issue, so I don't need to replace or repair each display. I just got to find the common issue that is screwing them all up. Okay, that's good news. I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure I can figure that out, though. But, yeah, good progress today on Mystic. Uh, what is this, episode three or something? Anyway, I'll leave you with the final words. The eye of the pyramid spots stars and lights spinners. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.